Welcome to the podcast where we discuss everything technology. Today I am excited because we are starting the first live podcast. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, we've never done a live recording. Uh, we're doing this for the first time and I am very excited to have Clement Sinyangwe, Dr. Clement Sinyangwe uh, on the podcast Doc, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here, especially that you, you know, you're hosting me on your first live podcast. So it's interesting. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So we've actually been uh, threatening to have this conversation for a long time, but, uh, you know, time never allowed them. I am so grateful that uh, you created time this time for us to get into the conversation. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I've also been looking forward to the, to this time. But like I say, it's better late than never. Absolutely. So I appreciate even, uh, you know, for you to consider hosting me on this podcast. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's start the conversation by just having you tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are, just the journey that you've walked to get to where you are. Um, you know, I know that uh, you're a dog, you're also the president of the ICT Association of Zambia. Please just tell us the full package. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I have a very huge story that I'll try to cut it short. Uh, otherwise, we'll talk the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, I'm uh, Dr. Sinyangwe, the newest doctor on the block. <laughs> I'm like two, two months old in this uh, you know, uh, title. But so far, so good. I think I'm enjoying uh, all the challenges that come with it. So uh, uh, Clement uh, Sinyangwe comes from Chingola. That's how my journey started. I was born from uh, a family of uh, nine, uh, from a minor, and stayed. I did all my you know, primary school education in Chingola. And uh, secondary school, I completed school from there. And uh, just from you know, secondary school, it, it's common on the Copper Belt that when you do school there, you join the mines. So just straight from uh, grade 12, I was privileged to, you know, uh, work as a general worker uh, in uh, KCM, where I served, I think, for almost, uh, you know, a year or so before coming to Lusaka, um, you know, for tertiary education. But during my time, you know, working in the KCM, it's interesting that we did all sorts of, you know, work ranging from offloading cement on our heads going in the bush to cut trees, you know, because we were attached almost to every, you know, department as general workers. So, you know, that was so strange as a young boy, you know, coming out of school, we expected to see, you know, these bougie works, you know, rows in the mines. But we were surprised to find that, you know, we were subjected to all these general working. But it was all interesting. You know, we had energies then. So we enjoyed, and straight from there, I came into you know college at Illinois. And again, you know, I intended to do. It will surprise you that I never even thought of doing ICT. I wanted to do radiography. I always thought of doing medicals. So when I came, uh, because our challenges, you know, then I I was coming into school when I had already lost a parent, dad, and there was no one to sponsor me. So. You know, I struggled to get, you know, funds to come and bring me into school. And it would interest you to know that uh, when I was coming into tertiary education, I was sponsoring myself. I started paying for myself from grade 11. Wow. And, you know, many people asked me to how I managed to, you know, sponsor myself as a young kid up to where I've reached today. So I delayed and I lost my space in radiography. And that's how I found myself doing printing as a course, with graphics to be specific. So I did that for two years from evening on, and I immediately, you know, joined Zambia Daily Mail. But I'll discuss further on, uh, you know, my stay at evening on, because it was, you know, interesting. Starting from meeting somebody I call a wife now. <laughs> it was starting from there. 
and you know up to you know getting employed while I was still in school how I raised money to pay for myself it was so interesting uh, you know so I joined Daily Mail and I worked there for almost 19 years was up to 20 years until I opted to go on voluntary you know separation and uh, joined Chalimbana University that's where I am as a DICT up to now and you know during the process uh, I've been involved in a uh, a lot of uh, ICT activities in the country that even saw me becoming president of the association today. But currently, I'm head of ICT, uh, you know, at Chalimbana University. So that's all in a summary. Uh, I mean, of uh, what Clement is. Wow, you've had quite an interesting journey and I uh, just thank you for sharing uh, the journey with us. Uh, but I'm also very intrigued, you know, you went into printing, worked for Daily Mail, and then you find yourself in ICT. How did that whole transition happen for you? Well, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I uh, interestingly, like I said, my intention was to do a geography and that's what I applied for mm. when I was coming to Evening on. But due to lack of finances, you know, I had no one to sponsor for uh, to sponsor me to come for school. So I delayed a bit. The time I was coming, I found all the grace period passed and the place, the spaces were given away. So I had to look for anything possible that I could do because I never wanted to go back to Chingola. So that's how I found myself doing printing as a course. And believe me, printing in those days at Daily Mail was considered one of the worst programs the one would do and uh, I did not worry about it I don't know what was driving me but I tried to you know enroll in that it was for two years and luckily enough before I even completed Daily Mail employed me on part-time and that was the beginning of uh, you know my transition because now I joined Daily Mail at a, part, a point where you know there was this uh, uh, digitalization of processes so I found Daily Mail was trying to digitalize the printing services. And that prompted me now to, you know, upskill and uh, started pursuing ICTs. So I kind of combined the printing skills with ICT. So I went to NIPA to pursue my certificate. And later, you know, upgraded to a diploma. I did not stop studying from that time until the time I obtained my PhD. So I've had a very interesting journey in as far as, uh, you know, academic uh, journey is concerned. So I was at Daily Mail. I in, enrolled for NIPA, did my certificate diploma and higher national diploma. And then I went to Zika's where I was exempted and pursued my Bachelor of Science in uh, computers. And from then I was elevated at work from, you know, a printer or a graphic artist into uh, assistant computer systems officer then and uh, after working for some years i was you know promoted into deputy ict manager the way i held until the time i was leaving daily now yes wow sounds like you've been studying all the years of your life hey well done well done now from uh, coming from chingola coming to study you know printing ending up in ict i'm super proud of uh, just the journey that you've walked it's a journey of resilience and perseverance well done to you but i know that uh, as you've been studying your phd well which you've graduated with now your focus and your area of passion has been uh, the study of uh, ethics in ICT. Let's now zoom our conversation around just, uh, uh, you know, exploring, um, you know, ethics in ICT. But before we even get to that, you know, I'm a teacher by profession. I love to start conversations with definitions. Let's start this conversation by you defining to us what ethics is and uh, what ethics in ICT is. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, to start with, uh, before I even go into def defining, I would want, uh, you know, maybe to mention what prompted me to take this ethics as, you know, mm. a specialty. Mm -hmm. You know, after working uh, for some years in the ICT, I realized, you know, some of unethical practices you know, that, you know, happens in the industry. Yeah. And I started thinking of what do we need 
for us to improve or stop this or even educating people to stay away from this mm -hmm. so that's one you know reason why i decided to go there and when i did my research i realized that almost every career has the ethical part that's you know applied ethics mm -hmm. so to start with talking about um, you know definition of uh, ethics ethics is simply the moral you know obligations that guides a person a person's conduct especially in uh, doing what is knowing what is wrong and right and i always say that we start learning ethics from the time we are born mm. from the time our parents start telling us no claiming this is wrong this is this is this is good it's part of ethics but once we go now we start doing this applied ethics and that's where ethics of ICT comes in mm. because you already know what is what what it means to be good or something called to be bad but when it comes now to ethics of ICT it simply you know like um, um, teaches or tells people on the good practice of ICT or the bad practices of ICT mm. especially that we understand that ICT you know like provide solutions to most of the problems that we, we go through so there are chances that in doing so some people may be unethical in creating such uh, systems that disadvantages others for somebody to deliberate create an ethical you know or to to to, to practice an ethical uh you know uh, activities when creating solutions i'll give an example like if I was to, you know, create a system for elections, mm. and then I deliberate write scripts that favors a particular candidate, then mm. I'm being unethical. But in ethics, we believe in, uh, you know, being like uh, real, like you create something that is neutral mm. without favoring a person or disadvantaging somebody. So now my study encompasses, you know, uh, like creating systems that would, you know, help a person understand that what they are doing is right, even as they use the ICTs or even as they create, you know, solutions, or ICT-based solutions. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. And well explained. I love uh, how you brought uh, the conversation home by giving that example of uh, elections. Yeah. Uh, I'm also wanting to just uh, dive into what ethics in ICT looks like in a workplace. Uh, you know, can you just paint a picture for us what that looks like? Yeah, uh, so like uh, I'll start with this, the, the, the basic example I'll start with. Uh, you know, in ICTs, the, we, 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 we do a lot of collaborations. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of uh, acquisitions. I'll start with software. Mm -hmm. So like we know that we've got proprietary software and open source software. So we should know that it's unethical for me to use proprietary software without licensing. Mm. That's to start with. Mm. So compliance is part of ethical practice. Mm. And again, when we come to development of software, mm -hmm. again, I gave examples. Right now we're talking about artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence uh, involves the issue of training models. Mm. We train models using the certain data sets that, you know, will enable, you know, systems to perform or learn so that they perform in, uh, you know, uh, predicting occurrences. Mm. So now imagine if I'm biased in, the, in training such models, mm. then it's highly unethical. Mm -hmm. We were hearing uh, two days ago, is it that I intend to use or is using uh, artificial intelligence in collecting, uh, you know, dates. Now imagine in the training of the models that they are using, they are unethical, mm. that it will be giving maybe unbalanced figures mm. that will disadvantage the businesses. Mm. That's how it's unethical. Mm. So that's why we come in to ensure that people understand that as they do that, they are ethical, they are professional. And you can't talk of ethics without mentioning integrity, mm. professionalism, mm -hmm. and uh, the moral obligation that we have as experts. Mm. So ethics, you know, believes that uh, somebody, when they're doing like they're training those models, mm. they ensure that 
they uphold the highest level of integrity and they are professional in ensuring that whatever system they create is based on ethical standards. Absolutely beautiful. So when we come back, I wanted to just come and talk uh, uh, about uh, the machine learning model that you developed uh, during your studies. Okay. Uh, I am looking forward to that conversation. During the recording, uh, when we were talking around just uh, the research that uh, you did during your PhD, and uh, and then you went on to talk about uh, the machine learning model that you created, uh, I was very fascinated uh, by uh, you diving into head speech, uh, creating a machine learning model that uh, responds to the Zambian African languages. Uh, I think that is. Uh, something that is uh you know worth just exploring and unpacking do you just want to tell us more about uh, that project that you got involved with oh yeah uh th thank you very much and uh i let me say that i had a very interesting uh a four to five years of my studies uh to start with uh you know, I did not even know that I'll reach that level mm. because it started like a joke, like I want to just do anything in line with cyber security. But as we went on, you know, I found myself that I'm dealing with uh, building of a model. And that's when I started learning and appreciating uh, machine learning. Because, you know, these are amazing technologies. We're just hearing about them, hearing about artificial intelligence. So it came to, you know, uh, my attention and that of my supervisor that... Uh, we're experiencing a lot of, uh, you know, censorship in online published uh, content. And we thought of now building a model that would help in detecting hate speech and abusive language mm. in online published content. The aim was to ensure that even before you post, your content is posted. As a user, you are warned mm. to say what you're about to post contains the amount of hate speech or abusive language. Especially, this was after the introduction of uh, cyber security, uh, space laws, mm. where there was a component of fine or, you know, uh, jailing somebody as a result of hate speech and abusive language. So the model was meant to protect those people from, you know, being incarcerated or punished without them knowing. Mm. But to, you know, ensure that whoever decides to post hate speech assumes the personal responsibility because that's an ethical obligation. Mm. So the, 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 the model was simply like, or uh, well, the process involved training or building a model and training, uh, you know, that model using local data sets. Mm -hmm. By, you know, local data set, I mean hard to generate or gather about uh, 500, you know, abusive phrases or 500 insults, mm. so to say. <laughs> it was very interesting uh, because even at, uh, you know, defense, I had to mention some of these insults in vernacular. You can mm. imagine some of us are elders in church, but we are forced to do that. Yeah. And it was part of the study. So <laughs> it involved, you know, collecting those words. But we thought on Facebook, or Twitter, mm. whatever online platform we use, you are not restricted to what language mm. you use. Mm -hmm. And when you talk of Facebook, maybe they'll just filter those that are done using English. Because most data sets that I was finding, example from cargo.com, mm. were built in English. Mm. But the challenge I had was now building a data set that will be subjected to the local scenario. Mm. And that meant now, training the model using Nyanja, mm. Bemba. Mm. But we all know that the computer does not understand Bemba or Nyanja. Mm. The computer literally understands now ones and zeros. Mm. So <laughs> I had to build this, uh, you know, data set in English, then translate it, use mm. the language experts, mm -hmm. translated those 500 phrases mm. in uh, Nyanja and also Bemba. Then we trained our model in, uh, you know, three languages, English, Bemba, and Nyanja. And we used the about five algorithms mm. 
the reason was I wanted to test which one would be more accurate. So I had to subject my model to five models, or I mean the framework to five models or algorithms. So successively, I trained it and, um, you know, tested it uh, by, you know, uh, using uh, uh, different uh, uh, measures to see how accurate uh, those algorithms are. So I'm glad to say that uh, I managed to successively build that model and I'm still working on it because we know one of the challenges that I, you know, I faced was uh, Zambia having uh, 72 languages. Mm. Mm. So that brought in another issue of the language domain where uh, a person would post something that would be regarded as an insult mm. in Yanja, but you find that maybe in Tonga it means a greeting mm. or something else. Mm. So now the question was, how do you handle now 72 languages to ensure that, you know, we are not producing fake results? So now it's an ongoing process. Mine, I, I, I you know, I, I subjected it to two languages or three languages, but I'll never stop until we reach all the 72 languages. And that's when we can say that we've, you know, produced the most reliable model, but it's a work in progress. I know other researchers will pick it up and, you know, add to this, uh, you know, model. Well done. Yeah. Well done. I'm actually so proud of you that, uh, you know, you built a model that speaks to the African context because that's the conversation now. When we think of uh, issues of uh, diversity and inclusion, you are the example of, uh, you know, just leaving that uh, concept out because we are saying the Africans need to be building models that speak to their context. Um, and, uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, done well and uh, I just hope that, uh, you know, more work will go into that model so that that model can be commercialized, yes. uh, you know, because we also need to be building uh, models that can be commercialized, that uh, people need to have uh, that mindset. So well done, well, well done. Um, I now want us to dive into your involvement with the uh, ICTAS, the ICT Association of Zambia, where you, you are the president. And uh, I know that elections are coming up. Uh, soon, where you are standing uh, again as, um, uh, you know, uh, a president. president yeah. uh, so just tell us um, just your journey around uh, just, um, you know, that area and uh, just what you've been able to achieve in the past uh, three years and what you are hoping to do uh, going forward should you be re-elected as uh, um, uh, a president. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, to start with, uh, it all also started in school hmm. while uh, whilst i was uh, you know pursuing my diploma at uh, nipa uh, i learned of this uh, uh, society called computer society of zambia they came to do pre presentation to the students and out of curiosity i approached the president then i said i'm interested in this and how can we participate as students but then we had no student participation so he said, well, we've come and we'll be engaging you. I said, no, 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 I want something more. Because you look, I've been more curious whenever I see something of interest. Mm. So I said, no, 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 we just don't want you to come and present, but we want to participate. We want to be part of your group. So he said, okay, organize yourself. And since you're the only one who wants this, we'll ask you also to organize your, your friends from if they don't. So I organized the two parties. And I became an interim president for the two colleges there. And that was the birth of student chapters of Computer Science of Zambia. So I was a student member. And after completing that, I joined now as a, a, an associate member of, by then it was called Computer Science of Zambia. And from 2014, believe me, I've been a member without posing and I've been throughout active involved in uh, the affairs of uh, an association. So it was later changed to ICT Society of Zambia and finally to ICT Association of Zambia. So this is a professional body that regulates the professional conduct. So I want you to hold that yeah. thought and when we come back, uh, you know, you're just going to detail uh, in terms of uh, what uh, 
ICT Association of Zambia uh, does and how it serves, uh, uh, you know, the professionals in Zambia. Thank you very much. Association of Zambia is a professional body and they take regulate the professional framework of ICT professionals. Uh, you know, in Zambia, including yourself, Sarah. So we established under an act of parliament, hmm. uh, ICTAS Act number no. 7 of 2018. So our core mandate is re uh, professional regulation, then all, you know, corporate institutions dealing in ICTs and protecting the, the you know, the public interest mm. who are the biggest consumers of IT products and services. So we are, you know, mandated to issue practicing licenses to all people practicing ICT in Zambia. So we've been in existence for a long uh, period, you know, starting from the time it was Computer Start of Zambia until now. But now we are established under an act. So we are located in Njoka Road, and uh, so far our membership has grown, both corporate and uh, uh, individual membership. And uh, now that we're going for, for, for election, I've done my first term, like you asked, and uh, part of the achievements that I've done, uh, I, I say that I've recorded more than 30 firsts. <laughs> because before I even took over, you know, some people would even wonder what ICTAS is. Mm. But since I, I came in, you know, I worked in the media. So I took advantage of the media to ensure that I become a media darling, mm -hmm. where every now and then the media is calling to ask, you know, to get reactions over national ICT matters. We've participated in uh, government, you know, programs. It should interest you to know that I'm glad under my leadership to record, uh, like, buying the first vehicle of the association to enhance operations. And also recording a net profit of 1.4 million. I think that's not uh, a mean achievement. And also I declared an operation, uh, you know, uh, amount of 1 million. We've never gone beyond or below 1 million since I got into office. So I think uh, those are some of the achievements. And as we speak now, we are just finalizing the purchase of the office space we are acquiring at a cost of 4 million. All those things have been achieved under the two years that have been uh, ICTA's president. So the focus was first to stabilize the operations, increase visibility, creating, you know, structures, processes, and procedures. We've been working on statutory instruments, which are just awaiting signing. Now, those SIs will give us a lot of powers, you know, to punish, to get, you know, take actions against all those people who will be found you know, practicing unethical uh, practices in ICT. And now the next focus as we go in, in the elections will now be value addition. I have to ensure that we create value and a lot of benefits for our members. It's high time that they started seeing physical benefits and also enhance compliance. So these things cannot be done. I mean, if I continue with my vision to ensure that the house is purchased put a lot of operational tools, employ the people as stipulated on our structure. And last but not the least, I ensure that we are now competitive in terms of salaries. We are paying our work as well. Hmm. All those things, salary has been achieved in two years. And now I'm asking people that they should give me three more years, the last term, so that it has now become the best professional body in Zambia. Well done. It seems, uh, you know, you've uh, really um, delivered quite some milestones, uh, you know, 
during your tenure. Let's talk about uh, the future. What are you hoping to achieve should you be re-elected uh, into uh, your office again? Well, to continue advocating um, for the ICT practitioners in Zambia. We know there are a lot of things that are affecting ICT professionals. Let's start with the reporting structures. We know that ICT, despite an enabler to every economic activity, we are still reporting to people like finance managers, HR, but we lack representation at board level. Mm. So this term now focus at that strategic, you know, to ensure that I participate in more policy, you know, direction and, uh, you know, uh, development, where we engage now the authorities to ensure that they consider ICT as one of the, you know, major economic pillars. If you even go to the, you know, uh, uh, the pillars as enshrined in the eighth national development plan. We've mentioned mining, agriculture, tourism, and uh, I think uh, the fourth one, but ICT is not one of them. So, under the next, you know, uh, our tenure, I have to ensure that ICT is recognized as the fifth economic, you know, pillar as one of the, you know, contributors to the GDP. Let's talk of America. When you go to America, we know that the highest contributor to the GDP is technology. Mm. And if America can do that, why not us? Every activity we are doing is supported by ICT. Mm. So this will be more like the focus coupled with value addition for the members. They should now see the value of belonging to ICTAS and also enhance you know, uh, on compliance so that we get rid of these masqueraders of ICT, those people masquerade themselves as ICT professionals in the street. Mm -hmm. We have to ensure that professionals get the value for the skills that they are putting in, you know, the activities of the economy. So that's more of my 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 focus as I you know take over in this association the the, the last term of, of of office. Beautiful, beautiful. You seem like uh, you've got your work well cut out. Um, this month is a woman's month, as you know, and the woman participation in uh, the tech industry remains a pain point for many countries. I mean, even globally, we've got such huge underrepresentation of women in the industry. What is uh, ICTAS, uh, the ICT Association of Zambia, doing around, uh, uh, you know, alleviating or overcoming this big challenge that uh, we sit with? Yeah, uh, a very good question. And uh, to start with, I think uh, I'm an advocate for uh, women participation in ICT. And this comes about after realizing that we have very little women taking up ICT as a career because they see it as a male-dominated mm. industry. So from the time I entered office, one of the first thing pronouncement I made in office was to ensure that every chairperson under my leadership should consider, you know, appointing one or two ladies to sit on their committee. And that was done. Now, as I get in my last term, I have to make a deliberate announcement to ensure 50%, because that one just went to say, appoint one or two, but this one, I feel the only way we can grow is to have 50% participation in every committee. Because that will see a lot of women now coming into leadership positions. And I'm glad to even announce that at least in these coming elections, we've got about four ladies who've given up themselves for leadership. This is, I think, commendable. So as we commemorate now uh, Women's Day, uh, let me start by saying Right now, we are calling about, we want to sponsor about uh, 10 women in ICT to participate in a women walk and marathon. That will be, you know, held at that day. And ICTA is, is ready to support that. Because they'll be carrying ICTA's colors to show that we are behind women and we are supporting them. And also, from the personal uh, perspective, uh, you know, there's something I intend to award my wife with. <laughs> We developed a book, a digital marketing book with my wife. Congratulations. Which was launched that, yeah. in this month of uh, the Women Month. Mm. So to me, that's the biggest present I'll be giving. And it will just come a few days after her birthday. So I think that's one way we can encourage ladies. So I want to start by showing an example from home 
that I push my wife. And if I can push my wife from home, then I can do it for the sector also. So I'm the biggest advocate of uh, uh, women participation in ICT. And I'll ensure that ICTAS, you know, continue doing so to ensure that we balance, you know, the, 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 the playground. Beautiful. We love men who advocate for women, uh, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, the men that are sitting in most decision-making uh, places. And uh, we keep saying men are our ally, you know, they are the people that should actually push this agenda for us uh, as women. So I'm actually absolutely delighted just to hear all the uh, intentness and uh, just uh, the steps that you've taken to elevate um, women involvement and participation uh, in the ICT sector. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Clement, this has been such a great uh, conversation. I have uh, enjoyed, um, you know, conversing just a wide range of uh, uh, topics with you. As we close this conversation, do you have any um, remarks that you'd love to leave our listeners and our viewers with? Oh, yes. Uh, but before I forget, first, we have even to celebrate you as a woman who is doing a lot in this sector. Thank you. I think uh, a lot of people didn't know who you were until last year when you heard that, uh, you know, you know, event where I was one of the speakers. I yeah. think it was massive. It was one of its kind Thank in you. Zambia. And we are happy. We celebrate you. Thank and we'll you. continue celebrating you this month. <laughs> so to the rest of, uh, you know, uh, our colleagues in this industry, it's just an encouragement that uh, they should give us the support as ICTAS. They should rally behind us, and together we are going to build this association and contribute to the growth of ICT in Zambia. We know that we've got a will from the top. The president, the ministries have, have, are giving us the support that we need. We've seen, uh, I mean, uh, implementation strategies, digital strategies from the ministry. We know the roadmap. We know the ICT policy was launched recently. So all those are documents that are showing that we have the support. We know a lot of regulations that have been passed of late. So it's dependent on us now to ensure that we implement those together. And we can only do that if we get organized. Yes. As for, uh, for, 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 for my personal request, just requesting people to believe in me once again and give me my, the mandate to finish uh, the term as ICTA's president. Thank you. Beautiful. And on that note, we'll bring this conversation to an end. And uh, please remember to subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed, so that uh, whenever we produce or publish new content, you can be notified. For now, it's ciao, ciao.